Okay, picking up where we left off, we've come a long way. Our guest book is starting to shape up. Uh, let's quickly do a little cleanup here. First, I want to rename this page. Test is not a really good name for our guest book page, so we'll go to page settings. And we'll rename this to guest book, just for cleanliness here. And we'll save it. Now, so our menu changed immediately. One thing I want to mention, uh, just while we're talking about changing page names, is when a page is named, a permanent redirect from the old page gets created. So if we go to Administration Menu, Advanced Tools, URL Manager is where you see the current friendly URL mappings. Like for instance, you know, guest book really maps to default.asbx page ID equals one. But 301 Redirect Manager, we automatically created a redirect when we renamed tests to guest book. So it's a permanent redirect so that if someone had bookmarked or the search indexes had crawled this URL, it would not be a broken page. It would redirect to this URL. So that's just a quick passing note here. Not really on topic for our guest book. Let's do a little cleanup here. We've got some junky records here um, that were entered when we didn't have validation. I can spot those in the list because we've got kind of a, a border on the bottom of each one. So you can see the empty ones. So our delete functionality is working pretty good here. Now let's see, these are all records, although most of it's junk anyway. Okay, and then we can also edit as we saw before. Uh, so we can update. We could update Homer Simpson's comment. Well, but it doesn't seem to have done it, did it? It did not. We're going to have to take a look at our, our update functionality is not working. Before we get into that, though, there are some things I want to review in this clip um, about security. Because we did some things that we just kind of did them and didn't really talk about them. Like our, our generator created this method in comments, and we uncommented it. And we didn't really discuss it. Um, where is that? Well, that is a method in the Mojo base page that we inherit from. And there's several methods there that are useful for you. If you want to find out where something is, you can just right click it and choose go to definition, and then boom, Visual Studio takes you right to the method. So it opened up the Mojo base page, and we can see what this thing does. Basically, it's saying it's checking if the user can edit this module. And there's a couple things we want to do. We want to make sure the module's on the page, for one thing, because if it's not on the current page, then something's been manipulated in the URL we don't want to allow. So first, if the request is not authenticated, we can just return false because the user can't edit anything unless he's signed in. And if he's admin or content admin, we can just return true without doing any more checking. Or if he's the site editor, this is only applies in multiple sites using related sites mode. And if the current page is null, return false. And then we look for the module on the current page module to make sure we found it. If it's not found, return false. Then we check if the user's in the edit roles of the page, that's sufficient for him to edit any module on the page, so we return true. And then if we haven't returned by now, see return is just going to return. We're not going to execute any more code if that line of code is true. But if we keep checking, then we're going to go ahead and get the current user. And if we don't get a current user, we're going to return false. And then we're going to check also on the module itself because a user could have edit permissions on a module without having edit permissions on a page. And that could either be by a specific user ID that's made the editor or by ro edit roles attached to the module itself. So we check and if he's any of those return true and then finally if, if all else we just return false. So that's a pretty complicated method that's encapsulated there in the base page just to be convenient for you to use that validates that the the module's on the page, and the user has either edit permissions on the module or the page itself. Now we've got a similar one for uh, view, view permissions, and we can also check if he can only do it as a draft. That's useful in some features. Um, so what we know we've got right now is we've secured this edit page based on the page ID and the module ID, but we haven't really uh, protected it correctly because 
we're not checking currently whether the guestbook we retrieved from this item good even belongs to this module that's on the page. We know the module ID is a module on the page, but it could be a blog module for all we know. We haven't really checked that. So what I'm going to do is change this a little bit, and I'm just going to declare a variable for guestbook. And then what we're going to do is in our load settings method, we will, we've already loaded params and we've checked whether we've got page permission. So we load params first. And that's just, you know, getting the parsing the query string. And then we check if the user has general edit permissions according to the main query string parameters. But we passed an extra query string parameter, that item good. And that's what we use to retrieve our guestbook. So what we're going to do is go ahead and retrieve it in the load settings. And then here, if I mean, the, other, oh, the other thing we want to do is uh, we'll declare a module. Oh, wait, we don't have a reference to module portal.business. Well, let's see if we've got a uh, module ID on guestbook here. See, this fetch could return null, so we want to check for it to be null first. Now, what we want to check is the module ID doesn't equal the module ID we parsed, then what do we want to do? We want to make guestbook null again. We want to say, that's bogus. You looked up a guestbook, but you didn't pass the correct module ID. This is this guestbook we retrieved had a module ID different than the module ID that we enforced security against. So now we can just basically say, hey, if, if guestbook is null, we're going to say let's, that's a security violation. Um, now, you would have to do this a little differently if you're using this edit page to create guestbooks, but we're just using it to you know, edit and delete them. Because creating one, you'd have to obviously deal with there isn't one at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so we want to change this logic, and we don't want to be getting the guestbook anymore here. <clears throat> we just want to check if it's no, we're not. So that was our save. We'll do the same in this guy, although we're really still going to delete the item by its good. And then here, we can do the same. And then we don't need this anymore. And what we need is we declared it previously as G. We're just going to make that be consistent. Okay. And so then again, we could finally check. And we could redirect also to access denied. The guestbook is null after, oh, it's got to be after load settings because that's where we get the guestbook. And we can just go ahead and put the same redirect there. Now, how much time do we have there? Okay, we're at about the nine and a half minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and end this clip here to keep from running overtime, and we'll pick up again in the next clip and cover a few more things.